Today, we're gonna to do five vocabulary questions in less than five minutes so that you can get better at vocabulary on the SAT. Let's start with this one right here. This is our vocabulary question one from set four of our questions, which you can find in the folder that is linked in the description below if you wanna follow along. Before I do anything, I always wanna look at the question so I know what I'm dealing with. I'm looking at a vocabulary question because it says which choice completes the text with the most logical and precise word or phrase. Anytime I see that question, I know I'm dealing with vocabulary. So I'm gonna take a look at the text here and see just the part where the blank is. The scientists were amazed by the blank of caterpillars into butterflies, a process that occurs over a relatively short period of time. A process. So I need to look for a word that could represent a process. The options we've got are bellicosity, regeneration, metamorphosis, and maundering. I don't know what that word means, but I don't think it's gonna matter because I can already rule out things like bellicosity because it's not a process. Regeneration may be a process, but I'm not sure if it applies here. I might have to look a little more at the context. Metamorphosis seems like a really good answer because I know that metamorphosis is something that caterpillars do and I also know that morph implies a process so I'm already leaning towards that answer. If I'm stuck between B and C I can just read ahead a little bit and take a look at the next sentence which says they marveled at its beauty and intricacy mesmerized by nature's ability to create new life forms. New life forms implies metamorphosis. Regeneration would just be the same life form so I know I can mark C. Let's move on. Number two, I look at my question. Again, I see that it's a vocabulary question. So I take a look at the blank here and it says the strength of character leaves a blank impression in the minds of those who witness it. We've got indelible, fleeting, perishable, and transient. Now this one's really easy because I can see that three words have something in common and that means that the fourth word is going to be the right answer. Fleeting, perishable, and transient all imply that something is temporary while indelible means that something is not temporary. It's something that lasts a long time. And so just because that one word is the only one that doesn't have that temporary meaning, I know A is the right answer, mark it, move on. I can use the same strategy for this third question. Again, I see the question. I know I'm dealing with vocabulary. I take a look at the paragraph and see that the government decided to implement a blank designed specifically to address poverty levels. Okay, that's all I need to read. So I'm just gonna take a look at my answer choices. We've got scheme, stratagem, plot, and conspiracy. And again, three of these words have something in common. That is, they're all sort of negative or imply some sort of shadowy dealings in the background. Those would be scheme, plot, and conspiracy. Whereas a stratagem could just be a strategy, like a sort of general plan. And so that's the one I'm going to mark. B is the correct answer. Again, same question, vocabulary. I'm gonna take a look at my paragraph. And it says, this proliferation has allowed blank musical talents to come into their own by sharing their creations online. Again, that's all I need to read right there. I'm gonna take a look at my answer choices. Nascent, groundbreaking, popular, revolutionary. Groundbreaking and revolutionary are basically synonyms, so I can rule them both out because, again, if one can be right, then the other could be right, and we can never have two correct answers on the SAT. So between nascent and popular, I can take a look at the context of that part that I read. When it says to come into their own, that implies that they're relatively new and that they're still discovering their style. So they would be nascent talents, ones that have just emerged onto the scene. And so I can mark A and move on. Okay, for question number five, same deal. Look at the question, identify that it's vocabulary. Take a look at the place where the blank is. I see here it says in war, no single group or individual can be considered blank. Looking at my options, I have ruthless, omnipotent, megalomaniac, and benevolent. I can rule out megalomaniac because that's actually a person and would not be an adjective. Between ruthless, omnipotent, and benevolent, we have to think about which one would apply best to that second half of that sentence. I can rule out ruthless or benevolent because it's kind of obvious when we talk about war that nobody in war is benevolent. And also, I mean, ruthless doesn't really apply either. It's freaking war. But omnipotent also works for another reason, which is that if you were talking about strategy, it would not be good to assume that you can't win a war. You need to apply a strategy, have some courage, and put it into action in order to win. If Ukraine sat there and assumed that Russia was omnipotent, they wouldn't be kicking their asses right now. Props to Ukraine, by the way. So let's recap what we did here with these five questions so that we can get a better idea of how to approach vocabulary questions on the digital SAT. First of all, make sure you're looking at the commonalities between the different answer choices. If you've got three words that have a similar connotation or similar meaning, you can probably eliminate all three and mark the one that's different. I'm Shvedi. 
I mean, it's, it's, it's tough. It's hot. It's summertime in Peru. Use other words in the sentence to help you figure out what you're looking for. Since the first sentence used the word process, I was able to determine that I was looking for a process and that really only left two options. If I'm still stuck between two choices, I can then read a little bit more to get more context so that I can understand which of the two choices to pick. If you're looking for more vocabulary resources, you can check out the slides that I have in the folder linked in the description of this video and all the other SAT live streams and other SAT videos I've done. In there, you'll be able to see some different things like the TOEFL flashcards that I use for SAT classes and also some useful links for vocabulary lists that can help you out as well. Another good strategy is to practice roots. If you know roots and prefixes and suffixes, you can often discern the meaning of a word without actually knowing exactly what it is. Leading up to the May SAT, I'm gonna be doing a lot more videos like this. My goal is to publish one of these every day until we get to the test. So if you like this stuff, subscribe to the channel, come back and I'll see you next time.